Oh, it's a great day to be an Eagle. I'll tell you that. Oh, we got a good one on tap today, ladies and gents. The big 1-0. Big number 10, the S, as they say in Espanol. Throw up the X for Dez, for my Latin speakers. Love Latin. And let's get to the show. We're going to get started in a little bit of special ways to celebrate the first double-digit episode. We're going to start with a beloved song. Yep. Told you I'm going to do it, brother. All right. And the one, two, three. Back, back to Culver days. The song my heart sings ever. No matter where I roam, tis Culver, 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 to hear the bugle call. Old memories, how they thrill me, and proud am I of Culver, and to be a Culver man. Woo! I'll tell you what, I might have won the American Idol with that one. Or at least Texas Idol. All right, all right. To business. Hand Planted Podcast, episode number 10, is live in five, four, three, two, and one. Top of the morning, folks. Good afternoon and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hand Planted Podcast. Appreciate you coming. Super happy to have you here. You know, I love seeing your face, or I love you listening to my voice, and you're also going to love our guest voice way more than you probably love mine, because he is truly one of a kind. He's a beauty. He's a legend. He is the very first fellow Culver cadet that I attended Culver with at the same time that has been on the podcast, so quite the honor. He is a proud Indiana Hoosier, and this man is the future of farming innovation. He's the one and only Troy McClowski. Troy, how you doing, good sir? I'm doing excellent. Thank you so much, Mr. First Team All Friend. Oh, I love it. The smile that makes the girlfriend's moms laugh. Woo. It's good to have one of those smiles, you know? <laughs> How you doing, Pete? I'm solid, brother. It's been a good week, and it's been a great evening, especially now that you and I got to catch up for a bit. We did, as per podcast tradition, had our, had our chit-chat beforehand, and that's, that's always a great part. Mm-hmm. Well worth it. Good to catch up. Touching, touching, touching base. It's good to do with your family. Good to do with your brothers. Good to do and good to do with a lot of good people. We were talking about an interesting character right before we fired up the engine. Mr. Norman Borlaug, if I'm saying it correctly. Yes, yes, yes. I am fascinated. Can you fill me in? So, Mr. Norman is a special hero of mine personally, um, and he was of the world, in fact. He was one of uh, the founding fathers of GMOs, um, which gets such a bad rap nowadays, but in fact, he helped save the world by implementing GMOs all across these nations that struggled growing crops he was able to bring drought resistant crops to them and help feed nations uh save millions of children and he's been credited for this and incredible things yeah i mean just the great reading his wikipedia looks like he should be in the hall of fame and just about everything yeah just whenever you can get a shout out to good old norman i i always want to give him some credit 100 percent. this is This is nothing but love, respect, and honor for Norman and all that he's done. Because if you don't know Norman, look him up. Phenomenal man. And he 
he laid a lot of bricks for the the agricultural in, industry. Hey. Yes, he did. I gotta give him that. I gotta give him that. Brother Troy, how's the knee feeling nowadays? I know you've been through about ninety nine injuries with the knee. <laughs> that knee is made of steel. No, I it's actually in mental fiberglass right now. I just played some golf today and it is on fire. Got a little ice pack on it right now, but uh there you go. No, it's it's been better. You know, I'm looking to do stem cells here soon. Uh, I think it's probably the next step. One thousand um, percent support that. So, gonna gonna head probably out to California eventually when things relax that- with all this COVID deal. We got a we have a, a company out there that we've been working with stem cells and cows for years, and moved over to human trials recently. So. Um. Oh yeah. Probably gonna sign they up have, for that. They have so much incredible research on stem cells and the benefits, and it's mind blowing. And the fact that it's not readily available is really shortcutting a lot of, or restricting a lot of humanity from being healed. Yeah, it's red tape. That's part of America, I suppose, part of yeah. this type of world we live in. So, you know, it's for Texas more than you'd think, you know, a lot of oh, 100%. things that probably get pushed out there. So I'm not, I'm not too against it. We still, you know, still more research to be done, but a lot of it's promising. So I'm more than willing to, to give it a shot. And I feel like one thing people should definitely take away from that is that there's always more research to be done on literally every category of science and technology and evolution. Like there is always Almost. more research to be done. Almost. Wait, am math? I missing something? Oh, math. math is perfect. That's why I've always liked math. Well, without math, without, without math, humanity probably wouldn't be able to advance to like well, of course. Int- intense yes, yes. intense science right but yeah never... you're, you're, a, you're a math guy i didn't know that yeah i was a huge math guy i mean at culver i remember i was like a calculus team no i never never that much of a math geek but uh no i just remember it was like i think it was sophomore year i was in a class with a bunch of seniors and uh, I think it was I think it was Momo. It was Momo Kime. Momo's a hell of one of the great one of the great humans out there. Um, Good and man. We're we're taking a test, and I'm like flying through the test, and uh, like I finish, I hand my test, waiting for the period to end. It ends, and we walk out in the hallway, and Momo's like, "Hey, um, you know, I don't, I didn't need it, but thanks for you know whispering out all those answers to me." I was like, what? I was like, yeah, you you said all the answers out loud. I was like, no, I didn't. He's like, dude, you talk so much when you're doing math problems in your head. It's unreal. It's like something I never realized. I was like, I was just so into the math, you know, but good times. Right. Hey, no one did anything wrong in that situation, and you helped someone out. And anytime you can do that, that's a win. Hey, what was I supposed to do? You did a good thing. You did a good thing. I was not a math guy myself. I mean, I, I this is how I, I, I've always viewed math. There's only so much that you need to know yes, yes when it yes. comes to certain uh, it's not necessarily practical and right everyday living to know geometry and and calculus and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of sad. It really is because, you know, like for us growing up, like it was, I remember being in school and, you know, this is what we had to do. We had to do the math problems. We had to figure it out. You couldn't just pop into Google and type 3000 to the X square root times 4,400 divided by 22 
give it to me in a percentage. Like he couldn't do that. No. Yeah. Yeah. But like now it's like everyone can do that. I mean, there's apps where you just literally take your phone camera, put it on the math problem. It gives you the answer. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That would have been there's, so convenient during my I believe, I believe I believe Snapchat had a filter for a while that would do that. Yeah, no. Oh, Crazy. those greasy dogs at Snapchat trying to do whatever they can to stay in the social media industry. <sighs> They're doing all right. I think they're, they're doing good. They're doing good. They're a powerhouse. Yeah. I don't know though from from looking at it from a economic standpoint and like market valuation, Snap oh, yeah. is gonna get taken over by uh TikTok. Mm. We'll but see. they they're different though. The thing about Snap Snap's always kind of its own Yeah, Snap kinda has its own lane. Is, yeah, and I feel like they have such a loyal fan base of the people yeah. who do use Snapchat that yep. it's gonna it's gonna stick around for a while. Yeah, it ain't dying. No. It ain't dying. No. Definitely for I think a younger crowd though, I'm kinda mm-hmm. over Snapchat. Honestly, I can agree with that, brother. Yeah. What do you what do you make of this whole TikTok deal? I think I think it provides a lot of opportunity for more creative content to get out there. I think given the industry I'm in, being someone who runs a digital marketing agency, it's good when more people are utilizing it because that means there's more opportunities for online advertisement on the downside i think i think tiktok compared to to facebook or instagram has more of a limited user base you know you can't sell you can't sell a three million dollar home on the tiktok ad campaign no like sure maybe maybe if Maybe there's a lucky one out there who maybe got lucky and made it happen, but right, right, it, right, ain't, but... it, ain't, it ain't the place. So that limits it in that aspect, which Facebook has really done a great job of adapting and innovating to being being in, being uh, usable and relative in all of those categories. You know, right. So my first business, the fresh delivery business, was one hundred percent Facebook grown. Well, I tried door to door marketing. I tried flyer campaigns. I tried newspapers. I tried all of the tr- traditional ways you could think of radio ads. Everything. Yeah. It's just like there was nothing more effective than a good Facebook ad. That is the truth. And that is the truth. I was, yeah, I was, and the bang for your buck was insane. And, you know, people can trash Facebook all they want for being, it's for old people, yada, yada, yada. No, it's not. It's really not. It's for everyone. The, those people who say that usually aren't, usually aren't the ones who do, who do, who you do deal, deals with. Yeah, true. No, Facebook just has, there's so much buying power in Facebook that it's well worth if you're thinking about purchasing oh, yeah. ads. I mean, brother, you and I, you and I uh, shared a lot of ideas. And mm-hmm. I remember when you got, or you had the operation up and running for a while, but I feel like you and I were some of the first First, first couple thousand to recognize, hey, you got a lot of opportunity here. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty out there, but I, I maybe always... maybe we were the first hundred thousand. <laughs> I, yeah, I've always thought what you're doing is like would be such a a smart 
a smart way to do things. Uh, able to market for multiple multiple companies, multiple businesses. Right. No, all I all from all from, you know, you know, comfortable office, your house, whatever you want, you know. That's the beauty of social marketing is you can be so fluid and so on the fly and things move so quickly and if if you're oh, just yeah. not with it, you're gonna get lost. But if you if you can maintain understand like what's changing with the algorithm and what's working with change changing your insights and your demographics, like if you can stay with it, you're it's it's so fun and easy. Yeah. I mean it ain't the the most difficult part I'd say when it comes to social media is the simple fact is if you want to have this successful social media, you have to have good content. Like it just has to be good. That's the foundation. Yes. Content is king. If, if you don't have someone with good creative, if you don't have, you gotta make the people, you gotta provide value. You have to either. Yeah. You need to provide value yourself or entertain or, or, or entertain, provide value in the, in being homey, being, raw being emotional being being who you are as a company and allowing your marketers to like get the best out of that and push that forward to max that out yeah yeah they'll know who to push it forward to for you and it's it's a beautiful thing to work together like that but yeah content is king absolutely well howdy there ladies and gents it is your favorite commercial break friend mr commercial break peter checking in here to let you know that this episode of the Hand Planet podcast is not only sponsored by water, it is unofficially sponsored by the Culver Military Academy, best high school in America, turns boys into men. Love to hear it. Anyways, gallon every 12 hours, and we're back to the show. Troy, let's hear about your golf. Go. I played so great today, dude. It was unbelievable. It was like I'm, ha- I'm, I, God, I love to hear it. It was like I. What was your best shot? Like, my best shot. Um, I mean, I par threed. I parred on all par threes on the course. So like all my par three iron shots were like gorgeous. Like there was one I thought like it had a chance at going in the hole. Cause like I hit it so clean, just so a pla- beautiful. A, a plasma grenade on right by the hole. And I thought it was gonna stick and roll back into the hole, but it was like a lot, not a lot. It was like five yards longer than I thought it was. I was like, oh fuck, like that would have been amazing. But the group in front of us, a dude hit his first ever hole in one. He's been playing for thirty-seven years. No way. It was amazing. Like we we didn't see it, but like we turned around the corner and I just see him like dancing on the green. Just going and nuts. Like, and I was like, did you make it? And he's like, yeah. I was like, I I'd want be, a Stella. <laughs> you know, it's like they got to buy beer, you know. <laughs> I'd be going nuts. He was going nuts. I was so happy for him. Have you had a hole-in-one, Troy? No. I haven't even come close, dude. Today was the closest I think I've ever had. But, I mean. So you're. You're almost there. I've only been playing I'm very far from it. I've only been playing serious for like three years, but I've taken it serious. Like, you know, I did a. I don't like fuck around when I go out there. I'm not out there to drink and shit. I'm out there to like play you're golf out, and get better. You're out there to compete and win. And, and, that's, yeah, I mean, that's just like how I was. Raised. Yeah, that's 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 you. Two older brothers, everything. Everything was about winning. And it's like, I don't golf usually without them. So usually when they're there, it's like, like today, even though I was playing good, I was like, hell yeah, I'm kicking my brother's ass. Like, hell yeah, that's happening. I'm not saying it. I don't bring it up in their face, but he knew it. Of course not. He knew it. And that's probably half the reason, like, his bad play got come like compounded, you know, like half half of it was him playing bad and half of it was me playing good, you know. I, which is terrible, which is like sad to say, but I have a feeling like that's just how it that's goes. That's brotherhood. There it is. 
that's brotherhood. Point blank. Period. That's brotherhood. It's me and Chandler. But it's like I can, way. I can still, I can still be happy for him when he like does good when I'm doing bad. You know, I can still find it in myself to be like, like fuck, dude, that was a great shot. I'm so happy for you. Like, like he's seen me like hole out shots like before. Yep. And like he doesn't even acknowledge it, and it's like okay, like whatever. That's but a big that's brotherhood. Big, that's, that's brotherhood, right? That's brotherhood. That's a big, big bro, little bro dynamic. It's, it's yep. just the way yeah. it is. And yeah. it's it's, it's it, I and I love him, and I know he loves me. So it's like oh, yeah. it is what it is. So we it's are always, both just, the the young the young guns, young boys. Yeah, I mean, I got a younger sister who's princess, which makes the whole dynamic even worse for the boys. You know. <laughs> Like she's the queen, she's the princess, she gets everything. Not everything, but you know. Yeah, I know what you're saying, brother. We are the youngest brothers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was uh I wanna be like them, but I have to fight them. Yes. Yes. Simple as that. Yeah. That's like the definition but, of being a little brother <laughs> yeah fight the good fight the good fight in a good way yeah, yeah in a good way getting tough getting tougher yes absolutely builds character builds, char- you- builds character that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> my mom sent me this video of it was like some reporter doing a report on the beach and like behind her was this like eight-year-old kid just embarrassing the shit out of himself like dancing so funny on camera but she sends it to me with no caption and i was like this reminds me or i said this reminds me this reminds you of me and she's like yes this is why i sent it to you and i was like oh my god that's great thank you you for doing this because now i'm gonna think about how awkward i was as a kid for the next like two hours and i was like it worked you know She's like, LOL, LOL, it builds character. You're going to, you'll always appreciate you, for, like, being who you were as a kid. And I was like, damn, that's so right. It is true, brother. And it's funny you bring that uh, mantra up because Sandy sent a picture of me when I was in second grade to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is it's so rough. cringe. <laughs> rough yeah 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 rough rough it was you know me i'm pretty i'm an open book i like to put you know funny pictures of myself out there it was one of those where i was like jeez why did that why did why did we let that happen (laughs) (laughs) i was looking at pictures of me just now to send to you for like your deal oh yeah and i was like whoa it was like two years ago and i feel like that though (laughs) Jeez. But yeah, I hear you, dude. I hear you. I had a, I had a chili bowl haircut. <laughs> My hair is very straight, very straight, and I had highlights because that was the thing back in like two thousand two, dude. I re- yeah. I had highlights back then too. All right, good. All right, yeah. It won back then. It won. I it won I got, insane. I got highlights for my third grade choir concert. <laughs> We all had them. It was it was yeah. sick back then. It was Justin in our, Timber- in, our, in our minds. Yeah, JT JT sent it in to the moon. And the boys, man. The boys. We got to do it. The boys are doing. <laughs> uh, back when times were simpler. Simple times. In sync. Jurassic Park was in the movie theater. Yeah. Eating sour patch kids. Good days. Lord, Lord of the Rings, dude. Lord of the Rings. Start the Harry Potter original dude, Star Wars. It. Yeah. Oh, good old Harry. What? What a guy. What a beauty. Good old days. Golden era, brother. One thing that made me smile when I was reading the. You know, the good old podcast questionnaire. I send it out to get a few few talking points, a few a few uh questions to get the get the juices flowing to get a little insight. Mm-hmm. 
what I loved was that all three of the people that inspire you share the same I name. I knew you'd love this. I knew you'd like this one. I love to see it. I love to see it. Three M, of, M is three one of, of my the favorite greats. letters. Three, three of the greats. Three Mike that Ditka. I also inspire are inspired by. Mike Ditka, the one and only, the perfect season, the winningest coach in football history. He was a uh, he uh, did play for the Cowboys too. Let's not forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. R.I.P. Just recently passed away this past year. R.I.P. is a legend. Oh, sorry, that was Don Shula, not not Ditka. Okay, I was about to say, brother. I yeah, sorry, like, I just got mixed up a bit. My bad. I was about to um, say, like, I was like, oh no, it, my my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dick Dick is out. Dick Dick is down. No, no, no. Dick is good. Dick is good. Okay, good. Woo! Had me sweating up a storm there, brother. But uh, Mike Tyson, you know, the comeback, the comeback king. True. This is. This Have is, you seen what this? What he's legend? doing is nuts. Like. If you ever feel down about yourself, look at Mike Tyson five years ago and look what he's about to do. You can do it. At his age... Mind-blowing. Anyone can do it. What's your prediction for, the, your for this to. tussle? I don't know because he's going up against another... He's an old like, geezer. But, but the thing is, like, speed. I think speed matters more than power at this age. So I I gotta go with Roy, but we'll see because he's moving so fast. Mike is looking. Mike looks like like he's a younger, juiced self. up, ready to roll. Right. I, of course, I, the, th- the, the third I, Mike. Yes, the, the third, the third, the third, the the most legendary probably out of these three Mikes. The double doctor, Dr. Michael McCloskey, the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend. Get to luckily spend my mornings with him when he's home and share ideas and nothing better than that, dude. It's like I could some, of the, some of the best moments in my life are literally in the same chair downstairs, not moving, so... What's what's um walk me through maybe just a morning good old morning with Troy McCloskey and Mike McCloskey. So he's probably he gets up at like four and you know gets out there, he gets in his chair, probably four thirty, cup of coffee, fires off probably a hundred emails by five AM. And then, probably not 100, but, you know, he's firing off emails left and right up until 5 a.m. And then usually I'll end up downstairs between 5, 5.30. And uh, we'll talk. We'll t- I'll tell him, like, you know, we'll usually, if he's at the house, we'll part ways somewhere, you know, after dinner. And I'll go upstairs do whatever I'm doing or go out with the lady or whatever. And... So I'll fill him in a little bit and then usually he'll start getting like a business call or whatever. And so just start asking Absolutely. like, Hey, what was that about? Or if I knew what it was about, like, Hey, what's going on with this? And just trying to stay in tune with like everything he's, he's trying to do. Cause he's a busy man. And I always like to see if there's any way that I could help, which here and there I've been able to, but you know, but it's always nice to hear about everything he's that he's up to and stuff. Cause He's always running around. He's home, you know, half the year. He spends He's making in Puerto things Rico. Yeah, half the year he spends in Puerto Rico. Then the other half he spends between here in Indiana and then traveling around uh, the rest of the the country. So it's always good to to have him here and get to get a chance to talk. So looking forward to that tomorrow morning, actually. So. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. And the one yeah, thing I, I love mean, the one thing I love about it most I, I've that, I've yeah. I've told him that like we should record our those conversations just to like have them because they are like podcast worthy sometimes some of the stuff we talk about. I highly encourage it, brother. Yeah. I, He's I, like, I, you, don't put that don't put that on me. <laughs> the thing is, one thing you could do is you could just 
document the conversations, whether they're, you all you know, make a little quick video or make a recording and y'all just save it for personal memories and keepsakes. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Cause Chris and I, we do a, uh, we both have a video journal of which granted Chris is my brother. So he's more tech savvy than my dad or more willing to do it than my dad is. Mm. But, uh, we make a video journal. We just like do a check-in. We talk about what's going on in our life, how we're feeling. You can do it at any time of day and we have a shared album. But if we were together, we'd probably do it simultaneously. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, but I, I love that you get your more. I love that. Big mic. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a nice routine. The thing I love about big Mike is, He's always committed to the mission of doing great things for the world. Like, and he's, he's on it. it. It's something I think about all the time. And it's not that I don't want to do great things for the world, but it's like, I don't see how he finds the energy to care and do the things that he does and go as hard as he does in as many like, facets facets of business and and philanthropy and all these different things that he's in it's so many things i just i don't see where he gets that drive and energy uh and it's something like i wish i i had i he says i have it all the time but i know i don't and he's like one of one you know there's no one like him uh you do have it brother troy i try i i dna science confirms that well I got I got half of a beautiful other side that gives me great creativity and right. awesome. You get the mint awesome mint. hair and you do have good hair. All these other great things. So, so you got a, you got you got a lot of a lot of two great ones. I I would say so. I would have to say so. I would concur. I would concur, my friend. You as well, my friend. I appreciate that, well. brother. Yes, pre- sir. Good old ham. The good old ham fam. Blood, the blood runs strong. Always <laughs> does. But we got to It's a bit. It's it's one big happy family. The ham fam and the McCloskey fam. Tight like span. T- tighter than span legs. Two times too tight. As in as a Hosha, good way. As Hosha would say, tit tight. Tit tight. T.I.T. tight. Shout out, Hosh. I never understood what that meant, but... It took me, like, five years. <laughs> I love Hosh. Okay. That, like, that group of guys, like your brother, Gus, Hosh, yep, like, that's such a... Dude, what a group of guys. It's, I, like, it makes me jealous that I didn't... I, like, know, like, we're friends, but, like, I didn't have like a cohesive group of friends like that throughout like the years, you know, it's a, uh, it's a beautiful thing. It is. Um, It makes me like really happy to see, see them like reconnect all the time and stuff too. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've all been connected. I feel like for at least (laughs) since we've known each other. Yeah. And through, and through them, right. Through that group, like, there's such a great network of friendships that have blossomed from them all meeting that freshman and Gus meeting them junior year, you know? Yep. 100%. And then it trickled on to me and you. Yeah. Like we met before we even got to Culver. I remember you playing Xbox at the Cove at one of the condos. Oh, Couldn't even, couldn't even give us the time of day. What? He <laughs> couldn't even put down the controller. <laughs> Jeez, I would have slapped. I, I would have slapped me silly. That was pre Culver P. He did. No, that was before. That was before you and I would slap each other silly. Yeah. No, that was necessary. like. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I was, a, I was what seventh, eighth grade. Just, a, <laughs> yeah. just, a, yeah. just, a, just a shitty age. Just a little. Pleb. 
Yeesh. Those seventh, eighth grade years, I always look back at those and I'm just like, I just shake my head, dude. Why? The, some of the things like I like, I can just you have those like times where you just like you're just having a good normal day and you just like remember one thing you said in like seventh grade and you're like, why? Why? What have I done to deserve this? Why are you doing this to me, brain? Just stop. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's that it's that age. Where chemically the brain is like <laughs> right, like vibrating because there's so much <laughs> confusion and new sparks going on. I don't know. Yeah, or maybe not sparks, maybe fires. But oh, came a long way since then, brother. Been a, been a hell of a journey. Mm. Just getting, we're just getting rolling now. Just getting started. We still got a hundred more years of our life. I I hope. That's what I that's what I put my money on. You think we'll get to one thirty ish? I'm a big believer in humanity and science and biochemistry and where the world's going. I think that is 1,000%, 70% likely to happen. <laughs> Every yeah. time, just like Sex Panther. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I just, I just don't know if I want to play the mental gymnastics of thinking when I'm going to die. You're right. I don't even like uh, gymnastics now that we bring it up. <laughs> Just live in the moment, Pete. Oh, I uh, I absolutely do, brother. Good to mix in a little bit of futuristic thinking because no, for sure. it's the responsible thing to do. No, yeah, but you can't be doing it too much. You might, you know, you might overdo it. Well, brother might Troy, well. yeah, but you might as well, brother Troy. I don't know if you know. Actually, I know you know, but if you're new to the podcast and you're listening, you're in for a treat because we, as per tradition, we have the Hand Planet podcast, would you rather questions. (laughs) All right, let's get to it. Troy, the rules are that you are required to provide an answer. (laughs) <laughs> um, you, that's it <laughs> you, well this is kind of like uh, that's not, that's the big one the second one is that everything outside of the question af- after I ask it it's up for interpretation yeah okay yeah yeah alright let's, like, let's get to um, it yeah and the last piece of information is that 81% of the questions I've had, I've agreed with the person who's on. So I don't even know. You take that for what it's worth or do whatever you want with it. And I will answer the question. And here we go. So, would you, Troy McCloskey, rather have the Legs of a frog or the head of a horse? Ooh. I'd probably go legs of a frog, dude. It seems much more practical if you're going to choose one of the other. Um, minus the fact that I mean, you could still stand. Frogs kind of stand sometimes, right? I feel like you would be... Uh, evolutionary athlete if you had the legs right, of a like frog. You, yeah, like, like you go like win standing long jump competitions all the time. Every 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 jumping single competition in the world you win. And then there'd probably be a huge controversy saying like, oh, Troy, <laughs> he has frog Troy legs. Mikulski, yeah. he's got frog legs. Like, where did this happen? This is defying science. Like, what do we do? 
it all happened because of the Ham Planet podcast. He said he'd rather have frog legs, and he woke up the next day with frog legs. And yeah, I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> and then forty gold medals, forty gold medals later, you know, frog they legs nation. Of everything, and yeah. Oh, I, I wouldn't allow that. Not on my watch. <laughs> Not on Horsehead Pete's watch. Horsehead Pete's gonna have a. Gonna have a uh, nay. Gonna have a nay about that. I'll tell you that much. All right, brother Troy. We got question number two on tap. Would you rather always say what you're thinking, mm. no matter what? Like it's a disorder. Right, right. Or never say wait, never say anything again. Ooh. <laughs> All right, I'm throwing mine mm. out there. I'll do the always say what I'm thinking. I, I'm I'm a good guy. I don't think crazy things or negative. I mean, I'm human, but I would much rather do that than be silent. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't have a, think lot I, more, I don't, a lot more good think, things to say than weird right. or crazy, you know? Yeah, I mean, I've been told I'm an asshole anyway, like, by people. Not by me. You're, you're close you're, to me. You're uh, very. So, like, uh, that wouldn't probably change much. But, yeah, it might be hard to make new friends and stuff. So, huh. there's that. We'd still be chill, though, right? If we both had the uh, say whatever you no. want. Oh, yeah, I mean... I I say whatever's on my mind when, when I see you anyway. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> we, we would still be chill. But like, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm definitely taking that. I you think I'd be able, able to talk. maintain my relationship. I don't think I'm hiding anything there. Mizzen in Maine, that like Phil Mickelson brand, you know? Oh, oh yeah, that's good stuff. Bro, and I just shot the best round ever. I'm about to golf in button-up shirts for the rest of my life. <laughs> it, it's pretty gangster. It was. I felt like like people were like, if they saw me playing you the way sharp. I was playing today, yeah. in a button-up shirt, they're like, oh, this kid means business, you know? This guy knows what the hell he's doing. 
Yeah, it seemed like I knew what I was doing today for the first time ever out on a golf course. I'm happy it was a victorious golf round, brother. Very jealous. I'm still I'm still trying to break, you know, a hundred. I'm I'm in that Yeah, so slowing like just slowing down my swing is it's just changed everything. Because we're 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 large humans. If we just go yeah. slow, and it's tough. It ain't easy. Yeah, it, it's it's really tough. It, it was like I need it. So like I was, I'd like hammer at everything, right? And oh, then yeah. it, I got to the point where, like, I'd be injured by the time I was done. Like my back would be shot by the time I was done golfing. So I was like, I need to like figure out how to swing consistently to where I'm going to be able to have this swing for the next 20, 30 years. If I'm going to enjoy playing golf the way I want to enjoy playing golf. So it's slow it down, make it a consistent, repeatable action. Like they always fucking say. Yep. And visualize is huge. I know you, you you're do you're, today. You're today I you're did visualize visualization today was like so on point. Like, I could like I didn't even have to close my eyes to visualize stuff today. I could just sit there, look at the like my shot, the way I wanted to shape it. I don't even shape shots normally, and I was doing it today. It was it was just like I was in a zone. It was crazy. It was like I woke up today and just decided to be better than I was yesterday. It felt like you know. That's a powerful thing. The synergy is just alive in the body when that occurs. It, and it was, and that's like, and not just in golf, like that statement, like all in all aspects today, I just woke up and was just on another level. Now I'm fired up, Troy. <laughs> all right, Troy, we got question number three See? on the tab, senor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Would you rather? <gasps> would you rather yeah, yeah. vomit on your idol or oh be vomited God. on by your idol? Oh, my God. I always take one from the insane bag. I got different categories. <sighs> so, the fir- first question is, like, which idol, right? Like, I don't think I have a particular particular idol, like... I'm so I'm in the same shoes you are. I I mean it's up for interpretation. So it's like okay, so if it's American, up for interpret I'm thinking American Idol. What was my favorite American Idol? And just throw up on them. That's what idol is to me. I mean I've always used American Idol Idol. I've been I've always thought in my mind it's kind of the same thing. So sure. What was the name? Sanjaya? I I throw up on Sanjaya. If that's his name. Oh. Was that his name? That was his name, right? Like, I yeah, yeah. I, so, yeah, that's Yeah, Sanjaya. Yeah, yep. that was the one. <laughs> right, I throw up on Sanjaya. We're going with American idols. <laughs> that made that much easier. I was gonna say a real idol, I was I mean, I've thrown up on my father before. I mean Oh yeah, as, as a, a kid, child, yeah, that's so. that's what happens to dads. Yeah, part of the part of the thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I think it's I think it's unfair to look at it as a, you got to choose from that category. I'm going America right. all the way. Yeah, who would you who would you th- get thrown up on or throw up on? Well, I think I think I think I go with Kelly Clarkson. I think she's a nice. You'd let her throw up on you. <sighs> Is that your kink, Pete? Did we just find your kink? You know what? You know what? (laughs) Now I think about it. Maybe I just have like one of the guys who won. Wait, did Taylor Hicks win? (laughs) Nope, he didn't win. Um, Damn it. How about Ruben? Yeah, Ruben. Ruben. (laughs) That's a big meal. That's a big throw up. Uh, He's big. big, uh, Yep. Ruben and I go have a couple drinks, gets it on my arm. 
I'll get that one out of the way. <laughs> on your arm, fair. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Cheating. Next question. Cheating. Off for interpretation. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm, I'm getting out of the insane section. Mr. Troy Maslowski, would you rather know all of the secrets of space or know all of the secrets of the ocean? Ooh, okay. So there's That's two ways one. to look at this. The way that you just asked us, there's two ways to look at this. It's just, do you believe in aliens or do you believe that great, there's great point aliens that there's some type of other species that live deep in the sea or something like atlantis some weird thing you know so it's like hmm space is infinite so you'd be forever learning and understanding what's happening in space i'm so but, fascinated by space but i oh man the ocean knowing everything it's what is it knowing everything that's all it says knowing the secrets the secrets the secrets okay. it's the secrets means everything if you know the secrets in my mind if you know the secrets about something that means you know you know the full spectrum mm, but it doesn't say that it just says you know the secrets it doesn't say that but that's my that's yeah fair fair I'll yeah i think i, I as much as I want to go with ocean, like I had a bad experience scuba diving one time, so I gotta go with space. I'm going space, no doubt. Yeah. Think about your knowledge. Your oh, figuring, dude. You okay? So yeah. this is the deal. You figure out if you know the secrets of space, you know the secrets of the black hole, and then you know the secrets of potentially time travel and infinite life and all of that. So I feel like you have the comprehension at that point to facilitate the production of any sort of technology you need it. Exactly. You're Rick Sanchez, Rick and Morty. You're Rick Sanchez at that point. If you're Rick Sanchez, you're doing, you're making moves. I mean, if you're Rick Sanchez, you know, the secrets of the ocean as well. So this question is moot. Next question. Gotta love Rick. <laughs> legend legend hey if you haven't checked out solar opposites on hulu it's by the same people it is next level it's like rick and morty times two. Ooh, that's that's a tough, like, rick, like rick and morty's like ask. rick and morty's like you know funny and raunchy and like all of that good stuff and like witty all of the good stuff you know Oh yeah. Solar Opposites is only on Hulu. Rick and Morty is like on television. It's on like network television. Right. So they have some restrictions. Absolutely. That's Solar Opposites there. is just on Hulu. And so they have like creative free range to do a lot more like crazy stuff. That show is so next level, man. It, it had me. It, I couldn't stop watching it. I, I finished it in like a week. Not good. Okay. It's so good. Go check it out. I'm it's got like I'm some, of my, out. some of I'm my all time all time favorite voice actors are in there. So oh, great, great times. A voice actor's got to be such a fun job. I if there's look. any, like, if I could go back and I have a terrible voice because I've had a broken nose since like freshman year of high school, so I have this like nasally voice or whatever. But if there's anything I could do, I'd go back and like train to be a vocal actor. It would be, I think that's one of the coolest jobs out there. It is huge. I'm not going to lie, brother. I've thought about it a lot. You have a great deep voice that you could, like, probably audition for some things. I've seen some. So this is how I actually learned about this. My barber, legendary guy, cuts the mm -hmm. best, cuts the best hair I've ever seen. He, Austin uh, is a huge hotspot for for VO acting too. That's true. Yes, it is. It, no. it absolutely is. He sent me this video. Of this guy with a a nice, big American mustache. 
Mm -hmm. and it's just cut off right at his nose, the camera. And it's him reading off just these hilarious advertisements, like for all type, like all types of stuff. I'll leave it at that. But it is so hilarious. And it's just like, hmm, maybe I get the stash going again. And maybe I. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're hearing this right now, this video is sponsored by Peter Ham voiceovers. <laughs> Let's make it happen. 1 800 Peter voiceovers. Discount code. Love to see it. There you go. Next question. Would you rather live the rest of your life, Troy, with silent but uncontrollable oh gas or very loud, uncontrollable sneezing? Oh, it doesn't say constant. It just says they're both uncontrollable. I feel like sneezing is uncontrollable already, and I'm already a pretty loud sneezer. So I, I think I'd have to go with that. I feel like sneezing is already uncontrollable. So like, I don't think this question was thought through very well. How many, how many times yeah. do you sneeze a day? I mean, that's that's what I'm. I wondering. sneeze maybe like three times a day if I do. Yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm a three or four type of guy too. But I mean, I usually question... I usually do in in doubles, so maybe like six times a day if I'm like in like right now I'm, my allergies are bad, so it kind of feels good at times though. Sometimes it's like just get yeah, out. sneeze sometimes like fucking just releases a pressure. And yeah, that's what it's that's what it's for. Yeah, I'd oh, yeah. rather do that than just be farting all day. I mean, farting releases pressure. On, it's, it's healthy to fart, but... Yes. Holding it in ain't good. No. Hold, holding I mean, it in ain't good. But don't do it. Yeah, do it, do it where you can. All right, Troy, we got the final question. And this is... Mm. This is... This better be a good one. It's Not intense. saying it's they intense. haven't been good. They've been good. They've been they've been good. My favorite so far was the space and ocean one. Yeah, I like that one. That was a good one. Yep. I try to the ones I'm reading, I have them split into categories, but I haven't read a lot of them before because I like having the element of surprise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, let's get this final one though. Here we go. Troy, would you rather wrestle a bear? A Kodiak grizzly bear or a big old Louisiana alligator? Ooh. Ooh. I mean, both are certain death. Um, I feel. I feel like I feel like you have a better chance at not getting being killed by the bear. I feel like the alligator is just gonna eat you. It's gonna or it's not gonna eat you, but they do that death roll thing. They're gonna get you. Like, if they get you in their mouth and they death roll, like, you're losing a limb and you're going to bleed out. Yep. I feel like a bear, like, we've seen videos of people walk away from bear attacks. They're fucked up, but they're able to walk away. Alligator gets you, drags you into water. Dude, it's over. It's over. I'll take the bear. It's over. It's like it, you're it, the it's total hard to think about. It's hard to think about because okay, this is what the bear has. The bear has more functionality and like wrestling strength in different ways to attack you. It's got, right. its, it's got its claws. It's got its claws and its bite. Listen, I played D and D. I know exactly the type of attacks creatures have. This it's, is. I, oh, I know. I know you know it. I'm just helping our helping our listeners. <laughs> you know, it's got they, a multi attack. Multi attack power. It's got a level three size. <laughs> it's got a well. This is a Kodiak, so its aggression level is at least between the eighty-five and the ninety-five rating on the mountain scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got that on your hands, and then on the other side of the battlefield, you got the Gator. 
So Louisiana gator. So it might be one of those meth gators. I've read a lot about those. They're no joke. They're not. They are not a good time. And they also, you know, the gators got ninety nine bite strength. Yeah, gator. So gator bite. Gator might, gator might not be as agile as a bear, but if the gator gets you, you're done. A bear can hit you and swipe you, it can bite at you. And he might be able to finagle. You might be able, yeah, but if you keep it going. You get snatched by that gator no. and dragged into the water and they Just start water. rolling around with you, it's the roll. I don't care about the bite. The bite they're not going to let go of. But once they get rolling, it's over because they roll at like 100, 200, 300 RPM. Like they just f- start twisting. Tactical. Like it'll rip any bone out of the joint. Like you're done for. And then underwater. I mean, they have rain. a they have a a tactical wrestling move and rugby move named after them. The True. Gator Roll. Yes, the Gator Roll. I've had to do it on multiple I mean, occasions. But, but but then you have the bear hug as well as a wrestling move. So. In rugby, the Gator Roll is huge. Huge. Gator is huge. Massive. Because the, the number one tactical defensive move you can make. It's an alpha move. If you can get a good If one. you don't, if you can't, you got a gator roll, let your guys get on top, build out from there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gator roll the tackler, build out from there. Yeah. Love you, coach. Love coach. Coach, coach is, uh, Coach has got to get on the podcast. <laughs> That'd be an epic. That'd be an epic episode. We're going to get him on. Nolan, Nolan, been a good man to you and I, brother. That's for sure. Yeah. I wish, I so wish I played for more than one year. We wish the same, but. No. A legendary year it was. It was. And then once you're, once, you know, you play on a team like we did and have the brotherhood and camaraderie and success we did. I feel like that lasts forever. Yeah. I just wish fucking Penn didn't drop their A team to play us and let us fucking win our state. You know, I wasn't a fan of that either. And it is what it is. I will say in my mind at the time was like, hey, I don't care who we're going against. We can win. Which we came damn near. We, we did. Literally, like, two I points. remember... Two points. Two points. And I I had a chance to kick a long kick. We had a penalty. Yep. And we had a chance to kick, but we decided to take it and run it. Do you remember how we lost that game, Pete? How? The last play. We, we, were, in, we were past time. He was waiting for a, a dead ball to call the game. We were 15 meters out from from the try line and we got the ball. We like fed it back. We scrummed over it and you went to pick up the ball and you dropped it and knocked it on. God damn it, brother. I do remember that. I'm sorry to bring it up, but it, I literally just remembered that. I Cause I was ready. Well. I was, I was like waiting for the pass. I was like, we are so close to winning this game. Like at the whistle. And then that happened. I was so I was so destroyed. It was it was like a. It wasn't off the scrum, was it? I think it was. I know. I think it was off a ruck. Oh, it might have been off a ruck. It was. I do remember. It was, it was off a ruck, like right after the scrum. <sighs> yeah, having flashbacks, but. I'm, yeah, it had to have been off a ruck because off a of scrum it would have been a dead ball and he would have called the game, right? I am yeah. pissed because I remember their guy on the ground kicked it while I was picking it up. Guy, he's playing the ball on the ground. Anyways, no excuses. No excuses. No, I, I remember going out and oh, I've had my fair that, share. I've had my fair share of mistakes. No doubt about that. Oh yeah, no. But I remember going Thanks out after. after after that game, like, after, like, 
everyone cleared the field. I went to that spot that we where I could have kicked that penalty kick because it was a long one. And I went went out there to see if I could even make it from that far, and I kicked it. and I was like a good like five meters short, but you know, in that moment though, with the adrenaline going, who would have known? I should have said something. I was like about to tell you, and then you just grabbed that ball, fucking tapped it off your foot, and plowed over like three dudes and kept moving. I was like, "Fuck it, we're doing that. We're gonna score anyway. We got this." I was pissed. Good times. I wanted to win. I wanted to win, brother. We all did. Yeah, that was that was our season, dude. We were we were Bro, such we a good had- team. We we sure we sure were, and we and we lost and we lost Turner for the whole season, like right at the start, and he was our captain. Yeah, I broke his nose on accident. Yeah, and then I gave him a concussion in one game. He got injured by two of his best teammates. Two yeah, of his good, two I, of his two of his good. We had a lot of best teammates, but I went to good. make a tackle, and like he like went to make the same tackle, and then instead of like just running into him, I tried to jump over him, and in the process, I need yep. him right in the face, and I yep. felt so bad. And the ref looked at me, and he's like, "You should have just hit him. You should have just hit him." <laughs> I was like, "Whatever, ref. Pay attention to the ball, damn it." <laughs> Come on, ref. <laughs> like I just fucking knocked our captain out. I don't need you giving me a hard time right now. Yeah, I'm not in a good. I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Yeah. You know, sir, please, sir, always, sir. <laughs> yeah, the respect and yeah, that's. Rugby. I love that more than anything. I remember freaking out at the ref one time, and coach almost fucking. Oh, you can't brain. do it. I'm huge now. Brownie. Like, I like. I went up after the game and apologized to the ref like right away. Oh, Nolan doesn't have it. He'll, yeah. he'll, well, because he's a ref too. That's right. Yeah. He doesn't want that. That's the thing. The guys who are also refs are way more like, "Hey, don't even don't don't do it." And I've had a few. I guess I've had three coaches now that were also full time or. So they were certified refs. Right. So now I'm just like, hey, don't talk to them. Get away. Now when I'm playing. Mm-hmm. Avoid the avoid the ref like the plague, especially if you're talking shit to them. <laughs> well, Brother Troy, I think tonight has been a phenomenal episode. I love phenomenal. talking about all the Great farming job, innovation. Dude. I love catching up with you, brother. I love hearing about everything that's going on at Fair Life. And love to hear that the family's doing great. And I love seeing your beautiful face. Thank you, man. Always a pleasure. Never a chore talking to you, dude. Always, um, a, always a good time. Hope to, hope to see you soon. You need to come up, or I need to come visit. So, I need to get to Indi- ma- I need to get to Indiana for the fall. I need to go see some red. Uh, uh, come, come to the red, harvest. Red leaves. You need to come to the harvest. You need to bring the drone, and we need to just, you know, make a great promo of the harvest and yeah. have it just as like a memory for us. I would love that, dude. That'd be but dope. we could we could also use it in whatever fashion, but. We can I've always I, I've been dying to get a drone out on the lake, but that's I mean, you'd have to come sooner than later. All right, well, I'll talk to my. I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 All right, uh, let me check my calendar. I'll talk to my people. You talk to your people. Hey, make it happen. Hey, uh, a gabagoo. Uh, a beepity boppity. The people are talking. Forget about it, all right? right. Forget about it. Forget about it, book the ticket. Harvest, baby. Well, Brother Troy, you're a legend. You're a legend, dude. I love you, man. Always always great talking to you. Um, You need to come visit. I promise I'll come visit. We'll get it done. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening, everyone out there. Um. 
it's an honor to speak to you, Troy, and I know that it'll also be an honor for our listeners to hey, get some of your perspectives, get some of your, uh, get a little bit of insight to what's going on in Troy's world, because I yeah. know you, you've always been a great friend to me. You provided me a lot of great insight, and yeah, we always have a great time. So, brother Troy, as the proper gentleman we are, we shall tippeth thine hat <laughs> to the friendly folks still, still doing it on it. And um, we'll leave you with this friendly reminder. If you enjoyed the podcast, if you enjoyed even a couple minutes of it, or hell, even if you just chuckle that and send it to you. Do us a favor and share this podcast with someone who needs some new perspective, or not necessarily needs, but would enjoy a good perspective, would enjoy some good company, and would enjoy some good vibes. Because as I always say, you can never overdose on the good vibes, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll leave you with that. Have a happy, happy weekend. And sweet dreams.